Man, and I use the term loosely. Hey, it's uh, day two of the 58XL uh, reassembly, final assembly, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the goal today is to at least get the crankcase halves bolted together. <coughs> uh, the last thing I'm going to do before I bolt them together is I'm going to uh, line lap the uh, pinion race uh, to the uh, uh, Timkin to the sprocket shaft race and uh, uh, it's pretty close where it is uh, the book says the clearance is supposed to be eight ten thousandths to a thousand I think which is really a pretty tight uh, clearance for a, a roller bearing uh, Anyway, as usual, a little too loose is better than a little too tight. Uh, what I'm concerned about on this one is that there was welding done adjacent to the pinion shaft race. And of course, it's got a new pinion shaft race stuffed in it. So the alignment might be just a little bit distorted. It might have been a little distorted when it was welded. You know, you got a, a new Timken race on one side, a new pinion race on the other side. It's just prudent to kind of line lap them a little bit. So uh, we're going to do that, and uh, then I think the cases will be ready to be bolted together. Okay, here's the tool that holds the lap in alignment with the Timken bearing. And onto this tool, you put a Timken bearing. You put it in the crankcase, you put the other Timken bearing and you tighten it down. You could tighten it to the point where it doesn't rotate, although that's difficult to do, but it's a very snug fit in there. And the uh, lapping tool rotates in this bore. This is a precision bore and it rotates within there so it doesn't need to rotate in the bearing. And I have two old Timken bearings uh, that I've saved just for this purpose uh, because you know you're handling lapping compound and, and things like that. I don't want, I don't want to contaminate uh, new bearings with the lapping compound obviously. I mean, there's not supposed to be lapping compound in there, but in case some inadvertently got, you know, shoved down in there, you don't want to damage new bearings. You don't want to damage a new race either, but the race you could pretty much just wipe off anything that gets on there. Uh, you know, the bearings that gets in behind the rollers and all that, it's a little more difficult. And obviously we'll put a few bolts in the case to keep it together and lined up while the lapping is going on. Okay, generally speaking, this is how I hang on to the case when I'm doing the lapping. Uh, a lot of padding protection for the uh, camp cover mating face, protection for the generator face. Uh, the lap exerts kind of a lot of force. The case needs to be secure because the lap exerts kind of a lot of force and if you don't have it securely affixed to something it'll flop around while you're trying to turn the crank and it's a pain in the balls. The first thing you got to do is assemble the lap you know, I used to, this is the lap, I used to clean these, you know, down to bare metal every time I used them, but they waste a lot of lapping compound, it seems like, and they're just going to get it dirty again the next time. So I just uh, kind of wipe the big chunks off and really don't clean them. I know I probably should, but I don't. But of course, the consequence is, is you know, this thing is, is filthy with lapping compound, 
And, you know, I don't like handling the camera when I'm lapping because I get lapping compound in the camera and it's not a good thing. Uh, but I'll try to do it today for you. Okay. Then you got to assemble the uh, crank to the tool. And you got to line the hole up with a screw. All right, that's ready to go. Next, you gotta expand the lap until it's just a snug fit in the uh, pinion race. Almost there, just a little bit more. That should do it. All right, let's get some lapping compound. Okay, one last thing I want to do before I start lapping is I want to measure the race. Uh, my goal here is to take off no more than a half a thou, which is not very much. Okay, I'm just about exactly at uh, 1.375, uh, so no more than a half a thou from there. All right, so we're going to go for it. This is flower compound, fine lapping compound. And I'm going to squirt a little WD 40 on the arbor so that it goes in and out of that bushing on the other side smoothly. And you see, I don't know if the camera picks this up, but you see over here it's kind of tight and then it gets loose. That's evidence that it's the, the, the brace is not perfectly aligned with the uh, Timken. And this is true for rod races and anything you lap. When you get a little binding on one side or the other, uh, that's evidence that something's out around. We're going to tighten this up, I think, just one time, and that should get me where it needs to be. And I usually tighten this thing no more than about an eighth of a turn. Otherwise, it's too tight in the race and it binds up. You want to just move it a little. And that's probably all this is going to need. Put just a little more compound on there. We're going to do this for a minute or two and then we're going to recheck the measurement and I think we're going to be good. Check the number now.
All right, I might have taken off a couple of ten thousandths, that's about it. Uh, I'm going to do this one more time and I think we'll be good. I'm going to tighten the lap up one more time. Let's see where this gets us. Yeah, that that binding I was feeling is gone. Even it pulls even all the way around, so the alignment is correct now. Let's take a measurement. I think we're going to be good to go. The race is not quite a half a thousandth bigger than it used to be. So I think we should be good right there. The opinion bearing race has been lapped. Uh, dumped the crankcase in the parts washer, hosed all the uh, lapping compound out of it, and now we're just going to drop it over the pinion shaft and feel how that bearing feels. Alright, and there's just a little bit of wiggle in there. Uh, this is uh, perfect. So uh, we're ready to put the Timken bearing on and start test fitting uh, the cases together. All right, flywheels. Uh, previously assembled and trued up. Rods previously rebuilt. Well, previously rebuilt by me a month ago. We're going to put the sprocket shaft bearing on. As I said before, yes, you could probably beat it on with a hammer and fuck up your newly trued and assembled flywheels or you could put it on like this and you run it down until it seats and it's seated. All right, we got one more test fit to do. We're going to drop the flywheels in the case. And uh, we're just going to spin them and make sure they don't rub. So that's good. Now we're going to drop the other case on it and make sure that it doesn't rub then either. Well, this is bad news. I got a couple of bolts holding the crankcase halves together, and uh, sh the flywheels are locked up tighter than a fucking drum, buddy. Ah, uh, fuck, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with this. But, it's going to be a problem. Alright, see this little tiny shiny spot right here? That is where uh, this lock tab is impinging on this bearing race. So uh, I'm going to take the lock tab out, trim a little bit off of that, put it back together again, and hopefully that fixes the problem and the engine will rotate again. Okay, for testing purposes, I just removed the lock tab completely and now this is beautiful. Beautiful. Works great. So we'll trim that lock tab a little bit, put it back together again, and then these crankcases will be ready to bolt together. Alright, I trimmed the lock plate, put it back together again, checking it one more time. I don't know if you'll be able to hear this, but listen. Hear that? 
a little tick, tick, tick. Something in there is still hitting just a little bit. You're probably not going to believe this, but there's a little tiny shiny spot on the side of this screw right here. And I think the screw is rubbing on the pinion race. So I'm going to either grind some off the top of the screw or try to find a flatter screw and we'll see what happens. Alright, I found a flat head screw. I'll show you the screw in a minute. Perfect. There was something so immensely satisfying about spinning one of these over and you know they're so smooth they're they're so precise uh, just immensely satisfying alright so here's the uh, screw this is truly a flathead screw uh, geez what is it twenty thirty thousandths flatter than the other ones so you know we're not talking about a lot of clearance here uh, you know these motors they, they just don't have a lot of room on the inside so you gotta be careful when you're putting them together alright we're going to uh, fully assemble the Timken bearing and I'm going to do this uh, I, I do it two different ways uh, one way is the way we're going to do it right now where I take the case half set it over the bearing the bearing and the spacer are in there both of the bearings are packed with grease and if I've done everything correctly uh, I shouldn't have to take it apart again. And there is a specific reason I'm doing it this way. Okay. Uh, the bearing is tight up against the spacer. Okay. The cases are bolted together. Both halves of the Timken bearing with the spacer are installed and the bearings are bottomed out against each other. They're not torqued to the final, you know, 100 foot-pound torque, but they're, they're tight. Um, and the reason we're doing that is because when you tighten that bearing up, the Timken bearing up, it sets the free play on the crank. So there's going to be, you know, a thousandth, a thousandth and a half, maybe two thousandths of end play that will allow the crank to move to the right. Well, we know that there's not much clearance on the right side because the, the uh, pinion race was hitting the uh, screw for the lock tab on the uh, flywheels. So we need to check that to make sure that with everything together and assemble final configuration, there's still clearance there. So uh, let's see. Beautiful. Still has clearance. So this is now good to go. Had there not been clearance in here, had that screw, for example, been hitting the race again, uh, there's things I could have done, one of which is to put a spacer uh, between the Timken bearing race and the inner snap ring. I prefer not to do that if I don't have to, and I don't have to. But, you, you know, be aware, there's a lot of shit to check on one of these motors when you put it together. On this one, the last thing I have to do before it goes together is uh, set the studs for the motor mount. So uh, we're going to do uh, one more calculation and a measurement and we'll figure out how far the studs need to be sticking out of the case. Okay, this is really the last thing I'm going to do before I bolt the case together. Uh, there's things that could go wrong with putting this uh, spacer in that could cause you to have to take the whole damn thing apart again. So before I put it all together and no, I don't have a special tool for this. Looks good. Let's see if the ring fits. Sometimes the spacer is too fat and the snap ring doesn't fit. And that one fits fine. Good deal. Well, the time has come to turn these pieces of uh, motor into a motor. Um, you know, this is months in the making. And, uh, you know, I always wonder a little bit, do I have all the 
bits and pieces where they're supposed to be? Did I forget anything? Is everything checked? And the answer is, yeah, I think it is. I bought a brandy ass new tube of uh, Loctite 518 because the other one was all gone. Used it all up. Uh, see my Amazon affiliate links down below. Uh, that should do it. So, let's put the lid on. And that's it. Hopefully this uh, won't have to be taken apart uh, in my lifetime again, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, uh, next up, oil pump. Uh, right now I'm just putting the studs in. And yes, I know, I've said Loctite is evil and to avoid it at all costs, but every once in a while, you should use Loctite. Some of the old studs uh, were bent and broken. Uh, the hardware kit comes with new ones. So hey, let's just put new ones in there. Every threaded hole on this crankcase has been chased. And once again, a final assembly is not when you want to find out that you've got a screw hole that's fucked up and that you need to get it on the milling machine and do weird shit to fix it. Uh, because somebody took the liberty of hammering the breather sleeve with the dry pin on it through the hole they managed to fuck this all up in here so anyway it was screwed up so I decided to put one of the uh, anti uh, drain down seals in here so uh, that's already been installed like I said I've been waiting for this engine for these cases to come back for three months so I took care of a lot of this little stuff while I was waiting so uh, anyway we're gonna put the oil pump in and the first thing we're gonna do is to put the uh, pen in the uh, rotary breather sleeve. All right, we're going to put a little grease on the sleeve. Then we'll clamp the sleeve in a vise with the hole in the direction I could get to it. All right, I got a new roll pin and my tiny hammer. And then, of course, test fit and make sure the slots in the gear go over the pin, and they do, so that'll be fine. All right, just came in from outside, sprayed the first gasket with some copper coat. This stuff here, you get it on my uh, Amazon affiliate link if you so desire. Uh, this is pretty much what I use on uh, all the oil pumps and head gaskets. I'm going to drop this on the upper pump cover. Got it pretty much lined up with the stud holes. Uh, these pumps, these early pumps, have a screen in here. And I've got the screen positioned where I want it, so I don't want to move it. And I find the technique for this is to hold it from the inside and shove the pump in from the outside. And that's that. I'm going to put just a little grease in the uh, oil pump. I don't put a lot of grease or pre-lube in the oil pump because uh, I'm going to prime this thing uh, not too long after I get it assembled on the bike so just a little once again healthy dose of copper coat gonna lay 
the gasket on the pump. And hopefully with one smooth motion, slide the pump body on over the studs. Being careful not to fuck up the gasket, of course. You got to rotate the breather to line the teeth up. And that's one half of the pump together. This little key I always find to be a tremendous pain in the balls. We're going to try to get it in the slot on the gear, on the sleeve. We'll see what happens. Aster. This is a new key and it fits tightly in there, which is nice. Because the next thing you got to do is get the gear on it. And if the key is loose, uh, the gear will push it out of the way every time you try to shove it on. And hopefully we'll just slide the gear on. Hopefully. Oh, beautiful. And then hopefully... We won't use that gear because it's fucked up. We'll use this gear because it's nice. Let's make sure it all turns. Yes, another operation where you have to make sure it all turns. And it does, that's good. And this will use the smallest snap ring pliers you have, I'm sure. There we go. Perfect. Alright, and of course, liberally doused with copper coat. And hopefully slide the cover plate right over the studs. Beautiful. And then you can put the nuts on. And snug it up while gently rotating the oil pump. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, snug up the nuts while rotating the breather sleeve. And I'm calling that good. Alright, the last thing we're going to do before we call the oil pump done is put in the check valve. Uh, the K's and the uh, early XL's don't have a ball. They have this mushroom looking doodad. Uh, I don't know whether you could put a ball in there or not. I suppose you could if you had to. You could try it out and see if it worked. Uh, you can swap the whole pump out with the later model one that does have a ball. Uh, this doodad goes in there next. What I like to do with these is put just a little, just a little Loctite 518 around the edges. And that's all it needs. 
This thing has got a one inch hex on it. So you could use, of course, a one inch wrench on it. You could fuck up the threads on the oil pump in a heartbeat. Snug is all it needs to be. And of course, the very last thing is to plug the hole in the end of the pump. Put a little Loctite 518 on there. This is where the warning light switch, or if you were foolish enough to run a gauge, where the gauge would go. And that's that. Oil pump is done. Okay, the cam drive gear that came with this motor is a sloppy, loose fit on there. Uh, you want one that's snug. So I dug through my pile of old gears, and this one is going to be snug. This one had some burrs on the end of some of the teeth. So I got one of these little cheap diamond lapping tools and I've been just going over the teeth taking all the burrs off. These things really work by the way. There's a one, there's a three, there's a two, there's a four, and a generator gear. Right, this is kind of the moment of truth. Uh, if there is a problem with alignment of anything, it will show up when this cover is put on. So uh, I think I got everything stuffed in there, needs to be in there. Uh, let's look at the timing marks one more time. Looks good to me. Let's put the cover on. You know, when the cover slips on like that, you know it's going to work. Let's get some screws in there, tighten it up, and hopefully I'm home free. And the engine still turns smoothly. I think this screw is going to be too long, but we'll see. Yeah, I think it's okay. But you know what? I'm going to cut about a quarter inch off anyway. Just in case it's bottoming in the hole. And I made that one a bunch shorter. Yeah, nice. Uh, really coming along good. And you know, this is a convenient place to stop for the evening. Uh, I'm out of here, but you know what? You need a sticker. You need a coffee cup. Hey, join me on Patreon. Uh, links down below. Uh, visit my Amazon affiliates and get some of that stuff I use. Y'all have a good one. Uh, we're going to knock it off today. We'll see you tomorrow. Well, not tomorrow, probably a week, but it'll be the work that I do tomorrow. <laughs>